Hello and welcome. Here we are at Clark Auction, another sale, another preview. This time for Sunday, April the 7th, starting at 10 a.m. We have a wonderful sale. We have a pile of merchandise here. Great mid-century, great sculpture, great jewelry, great everything. So without further ado, let's go. Here we have a wonderful pair of these demi loon console tables. Look at the nice ribbon inlay, satin wood trim and border. These are a pair of 19th century. Lots of Chinese hardwood furniture in the sale. Whitney, I'm sure, will deal with that. Here is one of two chests we have by William Hill, William Hinn rather, for uh, Edmund Spence. Sculptural dressers, wonderful with the pillars on them there. This large bronze, you can get an idea of the size. Here's by a French artist called La Cruz, or Da Cruz, Cruz. Here, some of the start of the wonderful mid-century we have in the cell. A lot of it came from uh, Connecticut, Western Connecticut. Here's a pair of Warren Platner club chairs. Still wonderful fabric in great condition. Came straight out of the house where they were around the table, etc. This ta this desk here, Bureau Plat, 19th century French, the best of quality. Might even be signed under one of the bronze, but look at the Parker's re-inlay and the rosewood banding all around the top. And just sitting on top of the, one of the highlights of the sale, we actually have an original photo from the house. This uh, bronze kinetic sculpture by Philippe Hiquili is called La Cible, done in the 60s. Uh, we have authentication from the foundation in France. Uh, for They will supply that for a fee of 500 euro, but they have confirmed that it is correct. So all good, wonderful piece. And it came from a local estate. Here we have a rare pair of floor lamps. These are by two architects called Richard Kelly and Philip Johnson. I hope I got the names the right way around. Look at the size of them. Nice condition too, came from a rye home. Here we have a set of six of these chairs. These are by Casina, Bellini cab chairs. Here's the other uh, William Hinn dresser, all in wonderful shape, nicely inverted curve there. Here we have this glass sculpture by Pino Signoretto. Look at the size of this. Really great colors, the heads inside and the signed. Over here, this piano, I haven't heard of this piano before, but just look at the condition of this. I mean, it is like as if it came out of a box. How we manage that here, I don't know, but it's by Estonia. So I've looked, done some homework on it, and it's a pretty important piano. Before we leave, look at this Chippendale, 18th century, wonderful Chinese Chippendale mirror. Very finely carved, wonderful gilding on it, so it's in great shape. This came out of the city from 86th Street, I believe. Okay, one of many sculptures we have, this kinetic sculpture from the same place as the Hikwili is by Jerome Kirk. Nice kinetic sculpture, nice size, looks like a aluminum or stainless steel. Into the main room. Look, lots and lots of stuff. We have this uh, pretty Basquiati looking hard iron covering this glass sculpture. You'll have to go online to look up this one. Good size, but when the light is behind us, really wonderful. Lots of porcelains in this sale. We have a lot of Majolica. Look at all this wonderful majolica. It all comes in large lots. Plenty of sconces. These are nice press sconces ready to go on the wall. This is Royal Crown Derby porcelain. This is quite a rare set of Limoges. More majolica. We have a set of four of these. They're not overly old, but very decorative arm sconces. Good conversational piece in the house. I'm moving over here. This is a nice piece of majolica I like. Look at that. Nice fish bowl. Here we had in the last sale, we had a piece of Dalton that was uh, flambé that did very well. This is a Buddha, so hopefully it'll do well. Here's a nice little selection, four bronzes, one lot. Below here we have two Lino Tagla, Taglia Pietra. Look at the size of those, look at the wonderful decoration on that, all signed and dated, two of them. One a bowl, a bowl of vase, a large size. Below here we've got uh, Charles Fazzino, good local New Rochelle artist. This guy is at Milan Mitenac, really great. It's like a pottery, glazed pottery. Never heard of him, but I took it, took it because I thought it was wonderful. So check that out. This is uh, Harriet Whitney Frismush, Frismush. Quite an iconic sculpture of her. Slight little denting here in the arm, but nice original piece that has the foundry mark as well. Moving over here, one of my favorites in the sale, Bjorn Windblad, set of porcelain by Rosenthal. Look at the teapot, just Decor, decorative at the height. Look at the gilding on the wonderful shape. It's quite a large select, quite a large set of it. Now, I don't know what's going on with all these skulls, but now they're starting to send them to us from around the country. This one came from down south. 
this one comes with a hand even and we have another hand in the sale so all you medical students be on board here flora danica three pieces one lot so nice grouping here below here we have more royal worcester in this sale this is a little collection of sort of wedgwood style basalt santosis Christ on the cross and Christ as a child. Below here's a nice pair of sconces, small but really good quality, little empire pair, little quality in the gilding on that. Once again, plenty of clocks, Kenny will get into them, so we won't bother with them over here. Okay, start of a lot of mid-century. We have, I believe, eight of these chairs for Hans Wenger, nice original shape with the caning. This table was in the same state as the Wenger chairs, so we don't know if it is, but could possibly be. We have an Alvar Alto bench here. That's sitting between two uh, Charles Ames soft pad chairs, really good condition. We've had them before, so hopefully they will do well. Here's a nice contemporary style, but a nice teak looking bedroom set. Got two end tables, the headboard, this. This is a pair of lamps. It's in a lot of floor for, a bit like Power Powell Care Home or something like that. This lamp here is in really great shape, so a geometric pattern. This is uh, Bigelow and Canar. Nice with the bronze base. Below that is uh, one of two, I believe, Mastercraft ebonized and bronze mounted cabinets. This Danish modern uh, like desk slash table is interesting. Couldn't figure out who it was, but it's nice and long. And what's interesting in the back is that it has a lift up section that turns it into a table. Sitting on top, nice heavy duty, sort of Milo Bauman style bench. Very strong, heavy, great quality. Came out where all the Warren Platner wires. We have the sculptural light. Once again, go online to look at it. It's look like a female figure there. The lighting backs up there. We have a set of six of these chairs. Swivel. Once again, ClarkNY.com to ID, ID them. My memory's a bit soft this morning. Here, in one lot, we have a set of eight, six Warren Plantners. And then we have a set of four. So we have ten altogether. We're splitting them up in two sides. If you want to buy them all, you can, or you just want a smaller. They were sitting around this table here, this rosewood dining room table. This has drawers on each end of it, has one leaf. We did not take this table apart at the house. We put it straight in the truck like this. So whoever comes in, we hope is good at taking tables apart. We have this nice umbrella stand, like Italiano. Opens up all over. Danish modern sideboard. Nice original shape. Plenty of mid-century, as I'm sure the fans will like to say. This mirror is leather bound. It's Ralph Lauren. Over here, we don't know who this is, sort of has an Art Deco feel to it. Comes with a round mirror, but has a nice grain with the ebonized trim. And of course, we do have antique furniture. A wonderful little 18th century French provincial commode here. Looks nice and an original. This lamp here, plenty of good lighting. Vico Magistretti. This came out of 95th Street. Alongside it was this one with the neon. Forget who this was, you'll begin to get to me now trying to remember all of these things. Here we have, this is very nice, nice condition. Danish modern, slant front with three drawers below. Top here, well, this is a really nice lot. Two 18th century Italian mirrors, look at the ebony and the gilding on them. I think that's a good lot for someone here is that, you know, shame when we have to put period stuff like this in one lot, but we have a dresser. Sort of Sheraton style and a Pembroke table, all one lot. We have a pair of these Italiano commodes. This chandelier is extra great, extra special. Came out of, I believe, a rye home. Look at the brass in there. I believe it's an English maker. Go online to clarkmy.com. Gives you an idea of the size. It was working perfectly in the estate, so st should still be. Here we have an 18th century continental, probably German. Beautiful with the serpentine front, nice banding on it. And for change, it has inlay on it. Looks like it's all original, so didn't, the stuff didn't do well in the last sale, so we're hoping this will do well here. These four chairs came out of Sotheby's not overly long ago, but their period, I believe they might be signed. Uh, we put a photograph of the Sotheby's catalogue on it. This nice table here looks sort of looks at Art Deco with the ebony and the uh, bone trim on it. Here, one of two, Mastercraft. Nice uh, cabinet, looking a nice size. I believe we do have the glass shelves for it. Hardwood chairs, more Chinese hardwood furniture. This, I really love this. Victorian leather wing chair, sturdy. Look at the nice twist legs on it down there. 
you don't see, you see plenty of reproductions and all that. Here, this dresser is very nice, 19th century American Sheraton style dresser, but just, you know, nice inlay on it, nice condition. Atop that, we have this marble bust by Agathon Leonard. I always remember we got 450,000 or so for an Agathon Leonard Batwoman. Okay, flinging along here, I have to show you this, these two chandeliers. This one has to be back around. I mean, look at the size of the ball on the bottom. That's as big as my head, nearly that thing. Look, this wonderful shape up here, everywhere. Here's another one, came from the same estate, over in Yonkers. Below here, hiding. Nice period, little Italian, 18th century Italian cabinet. These two chairs, I believe, these are very comfortable. Need a little bit of a cleaning. Uh, these are by Lucien Rollin, a Rulin collection. With this beautiful hardwood Chinese bed, I don't know if Whitney got to it, but we'll cover it just in case. Wonderful patina, cushions added. Look, you can see how comfortable that girl is there, look. Here we have mid-century office chairs. One is Ames, the other untitled. We don't know who it is, but a really nice patina on the letter. We have Alvar Alto. We have this nice pedestal figure, all good size, original. Here we have this uh, library steps. Two library steps, we got an 18th century French one. This looks like a maple, possibly American one, so nice to have those. People love their library steps. Mid-century lighting. Barcelona style chairs, hardwood Chinese tables. Here we have this lamp, I believe it's Cartel. A little bit of a cleaning, it's a bit dusty, but it's in really nice shape. I believe it's also a coat hanger, so a good one for you there. Here, back to the, uh, the other Hans Wenger chairs. I'm gonna swing around here, might help you, Steve. Try and keep my photographer going. We have this, uh, look at the quality of the bronze urns underneath this table, and nicely cut along the side. We've got sofas here, nice parasol, a bag, bagu, maison bagu, quality tables there. These are nice, they're ebonized with the nice gilt trimming, chinoiserie decorated, but nice with the aesthetic sort of lines on it. Another chair there with the hardwood back on it, can't miss this. Gibson mandolin, looks like it's in nice original condition with the uh, case. Pairs of swivel chairs. These, uh, this set here now is very interesting. You have a ta coffee table, you have this little leather movable bench, and underneath it we have three leather benches that sit around it. This is by, I believe, Matteo Grassi, Italian designer. The sofa is even signed Matteo Grassi, and no, guess what? The woman who owned it told me she picked the animals for the hide. Anyway, we have a cello with our musical instruments. This here is really beautiful. Look at the patino on this. This is by an artist called Sieffarello. Don't ask me the first names because I have forgotten them. But really nice, large size. A little bit of scratching here and maybe a little thing on the wire there. So check it at ClarkNY.com. But good big size, wonderful quality. Below it, we have an Ames desk. Nice with the metal trim. We have this folds up. Nice 19th century heavy iron bench, came from the same status. Look at the iron here for this fireplace. And the etched leather, oh, really great. Nice period etched leather, hand painted. But the iron is really strong. Look at the end irons were around the fireplace, so you can imagine the type of house we had. I left the candle grease on, because I know it takes many years to get that, but look at the curve up and the carving on the, on the hand wrought base. Here's a wonderful Victorian be bench down here. These two chairs here are by a guy called Martin, M-A-A-R. They're called smoke chairs. So they're redone, sort of burnt. Pairs of end irons, nice Italian desk. This is a, probably not overly desirable at the moment, but a large period uh, mahogany table with the chairs along it. This door here, okay, came out of the same house as all the iron and stuff. Could it be Samuel Yellen? It's really the just unbelievable. The back of it has more iron all over, so check it at clarkerwhy.com. Below that we have mortise and pencils. We have one lot of them and then this one on its own. Then we have a pair of these, nice patinated. Below here, look at the thickness of the stone and the iron console here. Another one of the benches, the guy must have liked benches up there, upstate. We have French chairs, we have, this is sort of contemporary, but it's a nice sign commode. Moving down here, look at this, this opens up. 
uh, becomes a library step. So we have this nice uh, vending machine here. Or yeah, oh, we didn't win. Let's move on without that one. Okay, with this beautiful leather upholster bench here. These iron lamps signed came out of the same estate as the Yellen type doors, or possibly Yellen doors moving down here. We have a nice vintage Charles Ames leather chair and ottoman. Nice and comfy. I've sat in that for a while when I'm doing nothing, which is regular. Up here we have this. Look at this. This came from the house with the Yellen. Look at the size of that. Uh, I can't reach it, but look at the size and the quality of this uh, figural, probably German also lamp. Moving over here, sticking with the mid-century, which I'm glad we have plenty of. We have this really nice Carl Springer, probably a card table type thing at one stage. But up on top, look at this. You know, it looks like Pavo Tynell to us. It is huge. It is wonderful. I don't think I've ever seen one better. Beautiful with the brass top. Good shape. So come in and check that out. If you want to come and see it, you can move these to wherever you want. Make them right. Okay, we're going to swing over here before we come back on the home run. Alvar Alto chairs, Regency chairs, American flip-top tables. We have this really nice Italian 18th century two-drawer trestle table. These chairs here are pretty rare, I believe. They're by Powell Care Home for uh, Fritz Hansen. They were sitting around this table, couldn't find any signature on the table. In the estate, they were sitting around that table, right at the window. And in the living room was this. This is wooden, sort of has a, I don't know, feel to it. Anyway, it's nice wood, has a big glass top, so, but very well made. Nice lines to it. As usual, we have rock crystal chandeliers in the sale. Bronze French chandeliers, Ames chairs. Look at this. This is interesting, polychrome carved and painted. Uh, Chinese chair, maybe maybe Japanese, but nice nice patina, nice with the dragon heads on it. Up here, lots of rugs Kenny will get to. What are we missing over here? We're just gonna swing in here to finish Steve. A lot of Italian furniture, nice Italian 18th century chest there. Wonderful patina. Master craft table and chairs that went with these vitrines. This is a really nice continental, very nicely hand painted 18th century. Two drawer over two door. We have this French, beautiful marble top, nice period dresser, once again, 18th century. Just as you like, it needs a bit of work on the veneer and stuff, but it's really, really nice. We have vitrines, some more chandeliers. And I think I'm gonna leave it at that. Have a quick look around, see if there's anything I missed. I'm gonna hand you over to the next appraiser. Come to the previews. You can actually come now because we're all set up and ready. So you can come any day you want between uh, 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. or come on the preview days, noon to 6 p.m., Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Looking forward to seeing you all and thank you. Hi, and welcome to our April 7th Asian Arts Auction Preview video. Here we have this near pair of Chinese Fami Rose enamel decorated vases. You can see the beautiful scenes of warriors, the lion's head handles with the rings. Here is the underside with the Qinglong mark. Really quite nice at six to 900. This is a Japanese enamel decorated vase with gold decoration, really quite nice at three to 500. And next we have a Chinese calligraphy vase also at three to 500. And here is the underside of this piece. We have a Korean gla green glaze vase. We have an assortment of Asian items, hard stone bracelets, carved jade, a double fish snuff bottle, reverse painted snuff bottle, a hard stone carving, all of these together at three to 500. We have this black glazed vase, Chinese. You can see the underside with the six character mark within a double ring. Unfortunately, it has been drilled and there is also some damage to the edge. A grouping of enamel decorated objects, Chinese. This is really quite nice. I like the color combination of the iron red and the blue with the turquoise interior, a Chinese Fami Verit bowl, and then we have a Chinese Fami Rose planter. This is actually individual at three to 500 and these two are together. Here we have an X Sotheby's, possibly a Z Tan wood lunch box or picnic basket. Really quite interesting. It opens here, you release the pieces like so, and then it opens and then there's just a tiered stands. Let me put this back. 
and there's also the X Sotheby's tag to the interior. This is a Japanese Sumida Ware jug, so really quite nice with the applied figures, and then the mark on the verso. Chinese Fami Rose Enamel Decorated Cup with figures of children and a four character mark to the underside. A carved jade pendant on a beaded necklace at three to five hundred. Here's a carved jade cat with some russet skin to the Ling Zi. Two small carved jade pendants, one of a beast and the other of a bamboo stalk. We have this carved jade landscape plaque and then we have this small cabinet brush washer of Celadon Crackle Glaze, really quite nice on the footed fitted stand. From a Greenwich, Connecticut estate, we have this wonderful wood box with a carved jade lid with cherry blossoms or flowering branches, a Chinese landscape plaque signed upper right. Um, here from Bedford, we have this carved gilt decorated seated Buddha at six to nine hundred. We have this carved wood and gilt decorated praying Buddha. Um, there are some repairs. This is estimated six to nine hundred. Again from our Greenwich estate we have this grouping of iron red Chinese porcelains, a lidded terrine, and a pedestal dish. Really interesting. This is a Philippine headhunters basket. So here is one side and here is the alternate. Here is a Chinese enamel decorated plaque of a seated figure. So you can see it is signed here and here is the figure. We have not examined it out of the frame but it's really quite nice. Chinese enamel decorated dragon vase. There are losses to the enamel but there is a six character mark to the underside within a double blue ring. Antique seated Buddha. You can see remnants of the lacquer decoration and the gilt decoration. Really quite nice, great age to it. Again from our Bedford estate. Um, and this is estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. Pair of Blanc de Chine models of elephants from, came from a great estate in Mount Sinai, New York. We sold several pieces from them a year or so back that did very well, and this is from the same collection. And next door, we have a Chinese Fami Ver seated figure, kind of kneeling on a small table. Really quite nice, great quality, probably King Ji. Here is the underside. And here we have a white on white, um, beautiful bulbous vase. You can see the, if you just get it up close here of the floral decoration. It's really quite nice, most surely Kangji period. Unfortunately, there are extensive repairs. So there's staple repairs. Um, you can just see that there was, you know, extensive work done, but it's really a beautiful vase. In good condition, this would be an excellent piece. Large blue and white Chinese bowl. Here's the exterior floral decoration, the underside, additional decoration to the interior. Chinese kind of wukai style lidded jar. So here we have the lid, and then here is the underside. A two enamel decorated Chinese hat stands, both with figures, both signed, three to 500 for the two. Really interested seated Buddha within a double lotus base and a shrine from a Manhattan estate. From the same estate, we have this light celadon Chinese seated Buddha. Really quite interesting. Here's a grouping from our Manhattan estate. So we have this standing tomb figure, a 20th century gilt metal or gilt bronze sensor, and then this really wonderful seated Buddha. And you can see that it comes on a really great fitted stand, came from a great estate, and there are some stickers to the underside. But these three pieces are together at three to five hundred. Blue and white jar with a carved wood lid with food dogs. Here's the underside. Three to five hundred. A Chinese Fami Rose enamel decorated vase with roosters. And these are two Japanese prints, both individually lotted. One is Hasui Kawase. And the other is by another well-known Japanese artist. We will end our selection with this wonderful floor vase. It is a brown glaze Martaban vase from our Manhattan estate at four to six hundred. It does come with a footed stand that is a later marriage, but it's really quite nice, large in size. And that wraps it up for our selection of Asian arts, and we hope to see you on April 7th.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Clark Auction April 7th sale. That's right, it's a spring auction, and I have some many fine carpets to share with you today. The very first carpet is going to be a beautiful antique Harris rug that's known for its bold geometric patterns and durable construction. Just take a look at this rug, ladies and gentlemen, stunning. And here we have an Art Deco Chinese carpet showcasing a bold geometric design in vibrant colors, reflecting the fusion of traditional Chinese craftsmanship with modernist aesthetics of the Art Deco era. Absolutely incredible. Here we have a Kerman style carpet. It's characterized by intricate floral patterns, fine weaving, and a rich color palette. Up next is a vintage hand knotted beige and blue carpet adorned with a central medallion. This exudes timeless elegance and traditional craftsmanship. Next up, a vintage and hand knotted carpet with muted colors that emanate a subtle yet sophisticated charm, perfect for adding warmth and character to any space. Next is a beautiful brown and blue Chinese carpet showcasing a harmonious blend of traditional Chinese motifs with contemporary color schemes. Just look at all of these exquisite rugs. In fact, this is just a sampling. We have so many rugs in this upcoming spring sale, ladies and gentlemen. Just look at the fine craftsmanship and colors. A rug for every room in your home. A rug for every room in your home. Here we have a Saruk rug, easily distinguished by its dense floral motifs, deep reds and blues. Here we have a wonderful floral carpet, featuring a beautiful array of blossoms, adding a touch of natural elegance to any room. This brown and cream oriental rug is a stunning blend of traditional charm and contemporary allure, promising to elevate any room with its subtle yet captivating presence. This oriental carpet features an open field, and it offers a spacious canvas adorned with intricate patterns inviting an atmosphere of serenity and elegance into any living space. This oriental carpet is adorned with vibrant hues of red, blue, and pink. It is a striking masterpiece that infuses any room with a burst of colorful energy and charm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and what I'd like to feature right now is one of the most important rugs of this sale. This is a magnificent Hajalili Tabriz carpet. It is renowned for its exceptional craftsmanship, intricate designs, and use of high quality materials, originating from the esteemed weaving workshops of Tabriz in Iran. What a masterpiece, ladies and gentlemen. Just look at that weave. Ladies and gentlemen, it wouldn't be a sale without some absolutely exquisite Jeger Lacotra Atmos clocks. Just take a look at these clocks, ladies and gentlemen. Moving right down along the line here, we have some absolutely beautiful clocks. I see a beautiful gilt clock. We even have a beautiful scientific instrument here, executed by Bosch & Lom Optical Co. And here we have an absolutely exceptional black forest cuckoo clock, ladies and gentlemen. Just look at the sheer size of it. What a beautifully executed clock. All right, feast your eyes upon this absolutely exquisite English William Vale bracket clock. Absolutely stunning. Look at that workmanship. All right, let's move along to our horology. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I have some amazing watches. The first watch is going to be this beautiful 14 karat yellow gold Schultz watch. Execute it in the shell form pattern. That's what he's famous for. Right behind there, we have an 18 karat yellow gold Piaget vintage ladies mechanical watch. Moving right along to one of the finest timepieces I have ever seen, executed by Cartier. What an amazing watch, ladies and gentlemen. I believe Whitney spoke about it, but by God, this is something special. 
hard to find. Where are you going to get another one? Moving right along, I have beautiful men's stainless steel Cartier watch right here, ladies and gentlemen. Great piece. Next up, vintage Rolex date just. Beautiful. Just look at that black dial. Right along, vintage Breitling, ladies and gentlemen. Brought back to you by an unpaying bidder. This is an exquisite watch. Right over here, ladies and gentlemen, just look at this Rolex. This is something Ric Flair would be proud to wear. That is an exceptional watch. Look at those diamonds. All right, ladies and gentlemen, up next is some of the finest swords I've had the privilege of selling to you. The very first sword I'd like to share with you is going to be this absolutely exceptional Type 98 Imperial Japanese Shingunto Katana. What a magnificent sword. It has eight seppa. That's right, I have all eight seppa. This is a signed blade as well, ladies and gentlemen, an ancestral blade. Definitely look into that. Moving right along, yet another late war Type 98 Landing Forces sword, absolutely stunning, ladies and gentlemen. This is also a sign blade. Moving right along to over here, ladies and gentlemen, we have a beautiful sign, cut down Wakasashi. Beautiful, just look at this here, ladies and gentlemen. Moving right along, I have an absolutely beautiful fish belly, Wakasashi, unsigned, just beautiful. And finally, a true masterpiece, ladies and gentlemen. You've heard, heard of art blades. This is the finest art blade I've ever seen. This is a potential Bizensuke Fujiwara Muritsuko Katana. This is extraordinary. Late Tokugawa. Just look at the sheer size of it, ladies and gentlemen. What a beautiful sword. And finally, what do I have? Armor. That's right. Just look at this beautiful set of Japanese armor. Stunning samurai armor here, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that just about wraps it up for me. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you here on April the 7th, beginning at 10 a.m. at Clark Auction Gallery. Happy bidding. Hi, welcome to Clark Auction's April 7th Fine Art Auction Preview. I'm going to share with you some of the highlights from the sale. And we're going to begin with this painting over here by Antonio Rota, an Italian artist. And it's of a slumbering child. It's well executed and estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. Above that, we've got a Giovanni Battista Tiepolo. May look familiar to you. Uh, we had it in a sale before and uh, bidder didn't pay, so it's offered again. So go to our website to see some details about bidding on that item. Also in the sale, we have a uh, photograph by Arnold Newman of Frederick Keisler, uh, the famous architect and designer, uh, and that is estimated at eight to 1200. We also have a print by Sam Francis, uh, this fabulous work by Francis, and that's estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. And we move on to a more modern piece by the Thai artist Pakpum Silifon, and he's known for taking cartons from Sprite uh, uh, or Coca-Cola items and then putting uh, historical figures like here we have Jimi Hendrix sitting on Sprite, uh, which is a fabulous work and it's estimated at three to five thousand. Above that, we're going to the world of photography again with the Australian artist Peter Link, and this is actually uh, Antelope Canyons in Arizona, and that's estimated at a thousand to fifteen hundred. We now move to another. Uh, we go to a portrait here. It's an unknown but really fascinating portrait. Has a slightly Asian uh, feel to it, probably from the 1920s. And so that's a really great looking piece. And it's only estimated, I believe, at four to 600. For those New Yorkers, we have a scene uh, of Union Square by Morris Cantor, a well-known artist done in the early part of the uh, 20th century and that's estimated at uh, 1,000 to 1,500. We now move to a Vista landscape, the first of four works that we have by the female artist Marion Rainyak. Uh, this was done in the 1980s, and it's a fabulous geometric uh, uh, landscape that you can see that she has created this in uh, color, 
and that's estimated six to nine hundred. She was a student of Hans Hoffman. Above that, we move to another print by Robert Motherwell, and this is part of his automation series, similar to the Sam Francis, the abstractness. And this work is an AP, so an artist proof for the series, and it's estimated at three to 5,000. Now we're moving over to one of the highlights by the Japanese Brazilian artist, Manabu Mabe. Uh, fabulous work, he almost creating the colors here uses a palette knife like a Japanese sword. This work is estimated at 10 to 15,000 and it was executed in 1980. Here in the front room we have a few more works. We have several works again by Vincent D. Smith. A lot of works on paper so be sure to go to the website to see the diversity of Smith's uh, works on paper. Uh, this is done in the 1980s and it's estimated at, uh, sorry, in, actually in the 70s when he went to Africa and it's estimated at five to seven hundred dollars. Moving on, we have more photography by Horst P. Horst. This is Marlena Dietrich. We have two works in the sale. Uh, also, you'll probably see here on the wall uh, with her daughter another one. We move down to see the world of Russia by Ukrainian artist uh, Arnold Lakovitsky and this is in Russia and and uh, we move from Russia to Lower Manhattan by uh, Parker Newton an American artist so this is a view from Brooklyn and that's only estimated I believe at four to six hundred moving over we have another major print by the African-American artist Elizabeth Catlett uh, this is a fabulous black power print, and that's estimated at four to six thousand. Moving along to another African American, or actually a Caribbean artist, we have a Russ Thompson, a uh, fabulous work by him, and this is estimated a thousand to fifteen hundred. We finally move up to another Whistler. We had some Whistlers in our last sale, so this is uh, the Lime Burner done in the 1850s. And it's a mere 800 to 1200 for this etching by uh, Whistler. And the final picture that we have here is an abstract uh, by an artist, John Henry, done in 1959. He's a New York artist. And so this is a fabulous collage. It's called 10th Street. Okay, we're now here in the main gallery and I'd like to show you some of the works that we have here. Starting with this large work by Reuben Tam. Uh, he's originally from Hawaii and eventually ended up in New York City. Uh, and he's known for creating his abstracts with a kind of landscape edge of water work. This is kind of almost very patriotic with its red, white and blue uh, look to it. I also want to just mention above that, we have another Marion Rainiac, uh, the um, female artist who was part of a group of female artists uh, who had a gallery in New York City uh, in the 60s and the 70s. And this one, I believe, was done in the 60s and it's estimated at six to 900. Another painting that I want to show you is this large work by the artist Clifford LaFontaine. Not much is known about Clifford, but he did uh, work at the Met Museum and it exhibited in the 60s. And this is a lovely diptych, so it's actually a hinged work. And I just think it's got a great expressiveness to it and, and an artist that should really be more well known. I now like to show you some works by the contemporary African-American artist, Vernon Amelie. Uh, he's an interesting artist uh, that he's done, and we're lucky to have a series of works that he did in 2017 of punk bands. The other thing interesting about Vernon's work is he likes to put fluorescent paint, so you get to have a different dynamic when you turn the lights off. We have three uh, of these in this series, and also uh, four total works by Vernon. Uh, these are each estimated at six to nine hundred dollars. And like I said, you can go from the Clash to the Sex Pistols uh, and get those punk bands for your wall.
The final work that I want to show you is by Jeffrey Holder of Fernando Sanchez. Uh, you may know Jeffrey Holder as the villain from uh, the James Bond film Live and Let Die and the 7-Up seven seven commercials. Uh, the sitter uh, was also a famous uh, designer of women's lingerie and he designed the clothing for Madonna's Material Girl um, video. So it's lovely, a lovely picture to have and it almost reminds me of the Memorex um, commercial from the 1970s. And as usual, I haven't been able to show you all the works that we have in the sale, so be sure to go to ClarkNY.com to see a complete catalog, to see the array of things that we have to offer. And like I said, be sure to go to look at the Vincent D. Smith works because we have several great drawings by the artist. And so good luck uh, at the auction on April 7th. Hi, and welcome to our April 7th auction preview video of jewelry, silver, and couture. We'll begin here with this wonderful Reed and Barton Burgundy Sterling Tea Service with a wonderful tray. This is estimated at 4000 to 6000 from a Manhattan estate. Moving on to some smalls, we have this really wonderful Cartier round silver hinged box with an enamel decorated figure to the lid. From the same estate as a Tiffany & Company Sterling 14 karat yellow gold and most surely ruby compact. From Manhattan, once again, we have this pair of George II open salts with cobalt liners. An oval Tiffany & Company sterling tray. We have this really wonderful grouping of assorted flatware and serving pieces, but a lot are Tiffany chrysanthemum pattern. So if you take a look here, this is chrysanthemum. This is a really wonderful pair of tongs. So just really great quality. And uh, this is also Tiffany. So just an interesting grouping. Um, and this came from the same estate as our very large Tiffany & Company Olympia flatware service that we'll get to in a bit. Um, from another estate, we have this beautiful four-piece Gorham modernist sterling tea service with ebonized handle. Really quite nice. This is estimated at eight to twelve hundred. We have this three-piece Victorian tea set. Really beautiful quality. If you just look at the details here, it's really just so wonderful. And another interesting lot in the sale from a Manhattan estate. We actually sold the companion to this bowl and underplate several years ago. But this is Tiffany and & Company, and these are from the Chicago Exposition. And this is estimated at 8 to 1200 and you can just see the really beautiful quality and craftsmanship um, and the marks to the underside. So the exposition mark is right here. And moving forward to a little selection of silver jewelry. This is three pieces, and these were Elsa, they're unmarked, but they are from Elsa Peretti, and these were the samples that were sent to employees prior to it being released on the market. So this is a really interesting lot, estimated at five to seven hundred. Three-piece grouping of Victorian and English silver. So we have this wonderful pedestal bowl with floral swag, a large ladle, and then a footed gravy bowl. And now we'll move on to a really great collection of jewelry that I'm very proud to present to you. We have this Chinese gilt silver filigree bracelet and it is displaying these three jade pendants or cabochons and it does come with this form from Mason K saying that it is natural jadeite J with no dye or impregnation detected. So it's really quite nice. Um, all the details of this is available on our website. From the same estate, a wonderful 14 karat gold mounted carved amethyst and diamond brooch, really beautiful orchid, perfect for spring. 14 karat gold chain, suspending a 14 karat gold diamond and emerald pendant from a Long Island estate. We have this Tiffany & Company engagement ring. The diamond itself is a round brilliant cut, 0.73 carats, M color and VVS2 clarity. Really quite nice at 1,000 to 1,500. We have this multi-strand Keshi pearl gem and 14 karat gold necklace, really quite long. So really quite nice, great for the summer. An 18 karat gold jade and diamond ring in the form of a butterfly at three to 500. Here we have an Art Nouveau style gold enamel diamond and pearl figural brooch. A blue diamond, a uh, blue pearl, I'm sorry, necklace with a 14 karat gold and diamond clasp. Pair of Tiffany & Company Platinum Diamond and Pearl Earrings with the original dust bag and box. This is an interesting piece here. So this is a platinum ring with diamond accents and it displays a center prong set natural purple sapphire, which is from Afghanistan or Pakistan according to this 
gemological report. Moving forward, an 18 karat gold and jade Buddha bracelet. We have a 14 karat gold gem cabochon and diamond bracelet, Italian 18 karat gold bracelet, a very heavy 18 karat gold bracelet. We're going to jump back to this very beautiful carved horse brooch or pendant with the diamond accents. And what I really like is that on the reverse, you can see the matrix, which is where the opal grew. A 14 karat gold emerald and diamond bracelet, so a little line bracelet at three to 500. And moving forward, there's a lot of sign jewelry in this box. So we'll go from right to left. This is Cartier, 18 karat gold and rubies. This is a really wonderful 18 karat gold ID bracelet, which is free of any inscriptions. We have a 14 karat and 18 karat gold feather and floral brooch. This is a really beautiful 18 karat gold emerald and diamond bracelet. This was purchased at Cartier. However, I cannot find a stamp. Here we have a Cartier Love Bracelet, and this one is by Aldo Cipullo. Unfortunately, there is a break, but it does come with the screwdriver. That's why the estimate is reflected in that break. Um, here we have one of the Cartier gold bars on a 14 karat gold chain. 18 karat gold emerald and diamond bracelet. This is Cartier, 18 karat with a diamond pendant. This is an 18 karat gold Italian brooch with emeralds and diamonds. This is 18 karat gold, Italian enamel and colored gems. Really so sweet, perfect for spring. It's really quite fun. Here we have a beautiful 18 karat gold cat brooch, a pair of Tiffany & Company 18 karat gold and diamond earrings. We have an 18 karat gold horse brooch with diamond accents, an 18 karat gold Cartier alligator. Here we have a signed French ring with blue sapphires and diamonds. This is a Cartier dog tag. It is stamped Claudia on a 14 karat gold ball form beaded chain. We have a Tiffany & Company 18 karat gold cap brooch with a diamond collar and emerald eyes. And last but not least for here, we have this beautiful Cartier um, cube form pendant on this Cartier chain, 18 karat gold. Very heavy 18 karat gold bicolor bracelet. Really great weight to it. And one of the stars of the show, which Ken will also reach on, is this beautiful Cartier 18 karat gold, over 400 diamonds, ruby cabochons, sapphire cabochons, emerald cabochons, really so beautiful. Um, and this is estimated at 14 to 16,000. And moving on to another brooch in the sale, this is a Garavelli 18 karat gold enamel and ruby bunny brooch. Tiffany & Company 18 karat gold diamond and ruby brooch, a pair of Tiffany & Company 18 karat gold knot form cufflinks, a beautiful, exceptionally large turquoise and silver squash blossom necklace, two 14 karat gold hinged bracelets, a Tiffany & Company 18 karat gold and blue beaded bracelet, a Van Cleef & Arpels 18 karat gold key ring, a 14 karat gold and sapphire brooch, Tiffany & Company 18 karat gold, most surely turquoise and lapis bracelet, two 14 karat gold rings. This is in the style of the Cartier Love Ring, and this is a 14 karat gold and blue enamel decorated ring. 14 karat gold love bird on a branch with diamonds, pearls, and gems. A pair of 14 karat gold and ebonized wood hanging earrings, really quite sweet at three to 500. A pair of, or this is an individual, 18 karat gold link bracelet with handcuff closure. We have four bands. They are 14 karat and 18 karat and they all display various gems. A 14 karat gold spiral link necklace, a platinum art deco style gem and diamond bracelet. This is a pair of Ronald Stone 18 karat gold and emerald hoop earrings, a pair of platinum diamond and sapphire earrings. This is a Bucciolati 18 karat gold and diamond ring, really so great. English 18 karat gold and sapphire ring, a pair of trillion cut diamond earrings, a petite 14 karat gold and diamond bracelet. This is a high carat bracelet displaying enamel decorated flowers, uh, colored gems, and a central carved opal. This is a Cartier Most Surely Garnet and Diamond Ring. This is an 18 karat gold and diamond necklace. Purchased at Cartier, has a serial number, but cannot find a mark. Moving forward, we have this pair of 14 karat gold emerald and diamond earrings. The emerald and diamond surrounds are jackets, so they, do, they are removable from the studs. Um, this is a silver 18 karat gold and 14 karat gold emerald and diamond ring. Here we have a wonderful antique 
sapphire and diamond ring, a diamond engagement ring with a round brilliant cut diamond, a filigree diamond ring. Here we have a 14 karat gold emerald and diamond cocktail ring. This is an art deco platinum diamond and sapphire ring. We have a really wonderful 18 karat gold diamond round brilliant cut diamond flanked by tapered diamond baguette engagement ring. We have this beautiful, very sweet little engagement ring. We have another filigree diamond ring. Moving forward, we have a pair of Tiffany & Company X form earrings, a pair of 14 karat gold feather form earrings, a pair of 18 karat gold Tiffany earrings, a pair of Tiffany 18 karat gold and enamel decorated cufflinks. We have this 14 karat gold, I'm sorry, 18 karat gold charm bracelet with various charms. This is a pair, I don't know if I touched on these, pair of platinum and diamond stud earrings and these were by consigner provenance purchased at Cartier, but there is no paperwork or numbers to prove it. However, most of her collection was purchased at Cartier. This is a three-piece 14 karat gold suite with colored gems and diamonds. Moving forward, this is an Aldo Cipolo pendant. We have this high carat 21 karat gold bracelet. We have this 14 karat gold Chinese owl form brooch with jade and colored stones. We have this T-bar fob, which is gold. We have these two pieces together. Victorian and a gold chain. We have this collection. So we have two cameos, um, 14 karat gold cufflinks. We have a really nice pair of signed 14 karat gold emerald and diamond earrings. We will jump to these earrings, which are 14 karat gold colored gem and onyx. And I think that they're just great fun at three to 500. This is attributed to Cartier and there is a signature. I just can't definitively make it out but it was most surely by consigner provenance, purchased at Cartier, beautiful 18 karat gold, four marquee cut diamonds, and a pair faceted emerald. This bracelet is absolutely stunning. It is 18 karat gold, diamonds, and platinum. And again, by consigner provenance, this was purchased at Cartier. We have this wonderful gold hinge bracelet with an array of diamond accents. This is a multi-strand pearl bracelet with a 14 karat gold and pearl and diamond closure. This is the love ring. It's 14 karat gold and a diamond. This is a marquee cut diamond engagement ring. This is a wonderful high set round brilliant cut diamond engagement ring. Platinum Eternity Band, Platinum Eternity Band. Jumping forward, this is again one of the stars of our sale. This is a really very wonderful Platinum Engagement Ring which displays a 1.81 karat round brilliant cut diamond, G color, SI2 clarity. This is estimated at four to 6,000. Here we have a Tiffany and Company beautiful seagull form brooch and this is the paperwork from Tiffany that gave a value of 2800 in 2009 and really quite nice platinum diamond brooch. Two platinum and diamond eternity bands. This is a 14 karat gold circular brooch with a flower motif and it displays a array of multicolor diamonds. And this is a beautiful 14 karat gold hinge bracelet with five round brilliant cut bezel set diamonds at four to 600. And last but not least for the jewelry, we have these three amber necklaces, really quite nice. And now we're going to move on to a collection of couture. Beautiful Fendi magic bag, really quite nice, great condition. The majority of these purchase purses all came from the same estate. Uh, nearly all of them, if not all of them, have some kind of paperwork or the original receipts, and they're all in great condition. So Fendi magic bag. This is a Delval black leather purse with gold hardware. It's absolutely beautiful. What's really quite nice is you lift up the flap and then you can access the interior just from here opposed to up here, which is really nice. And it is in great quality and the leather is beautiful. Prada rabbit purse. So this is a print on leather. Really, again, great condition. Beautiful. Comes with this. This is very sweet. It's a mirror. So really quite nice for the exterior of your purse. And then it does come with a second strap for a different look. This is Dior. So it's a denim purse with enamel and rhinestones to the closure. Again, great condition. Silver hardware, silver and leather strap. We have a Judith Lieber Medaudier um, crystal purse. And it does come with the interior mirror and comb and the coin purse a Dior silver purse, so it can be used as a clutch or as a purse. There is a strap to the interior. Really quite nice. And this is a Dior Diorismo purse. 
beautiful leather with the printed flower on the exterior and the Dior tags. So really quite nice. There's a few additional pieces at the end. And then absolutely my favorite piece in the sale is this very large 518 piece Tiffany & Company Olympia pattern sterling flatware set. So there's just everything you could possibly imagine here. The consigner, this is not, this is a Tiffany flatware box. It is not the box for this service. And then it's also on this custom stand that was made specifically for this box. So this portion is just a custom portion that was made for this service. Um, but it's absolutely beautiful. One of my favorite flatware sets um, and just an extraordinary amount of pieces. So we have all of the fitted, I think some of the most interesting pieces of course are the serving pieces. It was really quite nice. Interesting to look at of course. So here we have several of the, the larger serving pieces, which are just so fun to look at because there's all these pieces that are no longer really applicable to everyday life as it used to be. Like this is a macaroni spoon. How funny is that? Um, so all of them are identified online. Like this is so beautiful, really so beautiful. Um, and so this service is estimated at 25 to 35,000. It came from a Manhattan estate. Um, really quite nice. Interested to see where this goes. And then we're going to just look at a few more objects of couture and then this funny little zombie conjoined baby head that maybe was a movie prop at some point. This is estimated at three to five hundred. We also have this Chanel backpack, so it's the black quilted leather. This is estimated at fifteen to twenty five hundred. We have a Gucci briefcase in brown leather, a Louis Vuitton hard case suitcase with the original stickers from when they traveled. And then the bottom here is also a Louis Vuitton steamer trunk at eight to 1200. And that wraps it up for a selection of jewelry, silver and couture for April 7th and we hope to see you there.